So, welcome to the second lecture of module 1, uh, the course on RF transceiver design. We are uh, discussing the basic of wireless communication. In the last class, we discussed about the various application and market overview and at, uh, at the end, we have also uh, gone through the history of wireless communication. So, we will further discuss about the same basic of wireless communication in the this lecture. So, I will just continue some of the application that uh, we missed in the last class. Uh, so, for millimeter wave application, there are uh, millimeter wave spectrum, it is a high, highly directional. So, there is a pencil beam kind of uh, wireless link will happen and we will have a high point to point communication. So, e even there is a intersatellite links can be possible. You all have heard about Starlink. So, same thing uh, that uh, for which is going to use a very high frequency. There is a point to multiport po point communication can also happen if we try to use a beam forming or beam steering. Uh, it is also alternative of fiber optic cable because uh, the amount of data rate that we are going to achieve that is much higher compared to the uh, conventional wireless technology. So, uh, there is a, a 38 to 40 gigahertz band uh, which, uh, which is licensed high speed micro data link band. So, for a micro data high speed data link, uh, this band will be used in future. There is a, uh, as I told, a 02.11 AD Y gig technology around 60 gigahertz will be used for Wi Fi standard and it is targeted at 7 Gbps of data rate. Same thing for automotive radar, why we are going for high frequency? Because we want very less latency, the uh, in fraction of second we would like to detect the collision. So, that uh, kind of radar require a very high uh, bandwidth. Uh, then there is a millimeter wave imaging, we can also use uh, the millimeter wave frequency in the imaging for object detection uh, for various uh, tumor detection or temperature measurement, uh, blood flow or water oxygen measurement, this imaging can be used. So, uh, millimeter wave has also uh, multiple application that can be used. Even millimeter wave has a wide application in commercial and military. So, in commercial as I told, uh, same automotive radar, uh, telecommunication, backhaul, uh, wireless communication up to last mile and personal and local area network can be made by using this uh, technology, millimeter wave technology. It can also be used uh, 38, 60, 94 gigahertz for military communication in future combat system, uh, secure communication in satellite communication or phase array markets this can be used. Uh, there are various reconfigurable or software defined system can be used for uh, military application. So, this frequency range also has a uh, application in defense and military. Uh, terahertz uh, again uh, terahertz imaging because we are going we are going to explore the use and there are multiple application has already come up. So, from various references I just want to give the uh, highlight. So, for security purpose if we want to detect the for drug detection inside the envelope, we can find out the drugs by using a terahertz imaging. Uh, for agricultural application, uh, we can also do the real time monitoring of water content on the leaves uh, that is possible by using a terahertz imaging. And the moment we go to terahertz, as I told, we can integrate also antenna on chip and we can make the a very small uh, miniature chip to do the imaging. Then there is a security for security purpose or detection of hazardous material can also be possible by using a terahertz imaging. Uh, in medicine, uh, if you want to find out the cancer cells, uh, terahertz imaging will provide the much better picture compared to other imaging techniques. Uh, quality uh, food, uh, food quality inspection can also be happen by using a terahertz imaging. And in future various uh, uh, cards, let us say RFID cards are going to replace with the 
uh, terahertz and it will uh, be very small size uh, like button kind of uh, size can be possible by using a terahertz uh, frequency and we can do many more application is going to come in future for terahertz. So, this is application of terahertz. There are some frequencies also has been used in uh, radio astronomy. So, radio astronomy and re remote sensing. So, in ground based radio astronomy uh, is limited to high altitude size due to atmospheric absorption, absorption issue as I told uh, there is a very high attenuation and then uh, this will also help us to do the exploratory research in the space. So, in radio astronomy uh, also it has a vast application. Uh, this is also used in uh, remote sensing means uh, we can also use a wireless communication in remote sensing. So, there are two kinds of uh, remote sensing one is a passive sensor system and another is the active sensor system. So, in passive sensor system how it work there is a sun rays will come uh, onto the surface of earth and then there is a reflected wave we ca will come to the satellite. Satellite will send the data to ground station to do the analysis how the terrain look like and what are the. So, crops analysis, weather analysis can uh, be done by using remote sensing. In active techniques, if uh, uh, sun rays are not sufficient, even a satellite can uh, transmit the uh, high frequency signal and then it will try to re, uh, get the reflected signal and make a uh, remote sensing. So, there are various remote sensing application also wireless communication is widely used and uh, in satellite or everywhere this uh, whatever uh, we are going to study in this course can be used RF transceiver design. So, uh, what are the key challenges uh, that uh, we are targeting? Uh, that uh, for RFIC circuits. Now, uh, one of the key challenge when because we are going for high frequency design, the first key challenge is a lossy silicon substrate. The silicon substrate is a lossy and because of that there is a poor isolation between uh, two nodes and uh, between uh, two ports and there is a very lower Q component. So, all the inductors are very low Q. So, because of that uh, lossy nature some of the RF functionality it is a difficult to achieve. So, that will be one of the challenge when uh, for RF designer to design the circuits. Uh, then another challenge is the need for a predictive design kit. Uh, why we need a predictive design kit because the we want our success uh, in the chip should be in first pass. So, we have laid it out and make a design schematic in simulation. So, we want the same results to be replicated in the measurement. So, we want a design kit which will be more accurate at RF frequency and which will provide us the better uh, models to predict the uh, uh, measured output. So, there are accurate uh, transmission line and transistors model is required when we are uh, designing the RF circuits. So, we need a accurate uh, predictive design kit. It should have a accurate parasitic extraction also. So, the distinction between a device and parasitic blood. So, if our uh, parasitic, at, uh, parasitic extraction is accurate, then we can analyze uh, the uh, output which is a much much comparable to the uh, measured result. So, it will save the designer time as well as it will save the uh, amount of money. It can also be used in a, uh, it is also important in silicon cat tools it will be easily integrated. So, there are a cadence with EM simulation. There are requirement of uh, EM capability, electromagnetic capability in the cat tools also. So, that will also help us to understand how the uh, conductor or transmission line behaves at very high frequency. So, uh, also it needs uh, integration of various tools uh, for uh, designing RFIC circuits. 
there is a, a need to yield circuits. So, uh, wh what do you mean by yield? I mean, uh, I, I I just want to throw the question. Uh, if, if I will tell you the yield is nothing but uh, how much percentage of success you are getting uh, in the fabricated chip. So, let us say if you have fabricated 100 chip and out of that 90 chip, uh, 90 chips are giving the correct result, then it is a 90 percentage yield. But in RF, uh, it is very difficult to get the high high percentage of lead and uh, uh, that is why uh, this need of predictive design kit will help us and uh, the process will be the whatever uh, design process will help us to improve the yield as well. And then achieving very high level of integration uh, in silicon while maintaining the microwave functionality. So, uh, because uh, there are many passive components and that uh, uh, integrating the more passive components at RF to the adding the integration of back end. So, we need to have a we need to achieve that uh, high integration and it requires a uh, much effort to achieve the integration high level of integration with microwave functionality. It is also challenge related to RF testing. So, in uh, means when we try to test the RF chip, it has a much challenge involved in RF testing. So, uh, in this also we need to have a RF testing uh, with uh, maintaining the microwave functionality. So, all the RF testing uh, has a uh, all equipment which are very costly and we need to handle it more uh, carefully so that we will get the correct results and that will also one of the challenge in the silicon RFIC circuits. There are many interconnect losses are there which is uh, difficult to uh, realize uh, when we are doing the testing. So, we need to have a better calibration of tools. Uh, so, calibration is also one of the important aspect while designing the RF testing. So, these are the key challenges of RFIC. Now, uh, I just want to uh, have a basic idea means how as a RF uh, IC designer or RF transceiver designer what should be the design flow. So, this uh, design flow will help any RF engineer to make the design. So, whenever you want to uh, start the RF design, first you need to have a design specification uh, you should have in your hand. So, from basic link budget, so you can make a link budget and based on the link budget you can estimate what are the various parameters that you are targeting for your design. One of the parameter is a frequency and bandwidth. So, at what frequency you want to work, what is the bandwidth that you are targeting, then what is the power consumption, there is a uh, how much power requirement. For example, if you are designing uh, RF circuits for uh, IoT application, their power is much, uh, it is a crucial, we need to have a very low power in micro or nano watt of power we need to have a functionality of wireless communication. So, uh, and if we are targeting like, let us say satellite communication or base station where the power is not a big issue, then we can have a high power and high distance can be covered. Third is again how much gain you are targeting from uh, the uh, link budget and what is the noise speaker. So, noise figure will give you the idea of sensitivity that you are targeting. Uh, so, all these specification, there are many more specification you can list it out based on your uh, design and complexity. So, this, this is the first uh, criteria means first step to start any RF design. So, you need to have a basic design specification to start with. The moment you have finalized the design specification, then second is the deciding the technology. Deciding technology is also important 
because as uh, I already shown you in the last class F t versus year plot uh, and even there is a mention of the technology node. So, for uh, let us say if you are targeting a millimeter wave frequency and if your F t is not sufficient enough to work then it is better to decide the technology with the your frequency and bandwidth requirement. So, you can also there are various kind of technology I have just added here CMOS, by CMOS. there is a gallium nitride, there is a gallium arsenide uh, or there is a uh, heterojunction bipolar transistor. So, various technologies uh, people are using for uh, uh, making the RF circuits. So, what you can target uh, for uh, deciding your uh, technology based on the frequency required. So, you can uh, the second step of any RF design is uh, deciding the technology. First is to list it out the specification, second is the what is the technology that you will target, then third is the designing a schematic. Based on the uh, targeted specification you need to uh, design the schematic. So, that schematic consists the transistor and transistor level uh, circuits uh, which you have targeted with the design specification. You can also do the ma macro modeling before uh, going to the actual schematic and then that modeling you can convert into the schematic. You need to simulate the desired parameters. Uh, you can also do the Monte Carlo analysis which will tell, tell us the various uh, at the various process corners of your design will be. Then once you have finalized the design schematic based on your uh, specification that you have targeted, uh, after that you need to go to the layout. So, layout is also important because in RF layout will play a significant role. So, you need to also do the complete uh, DRC design rule check, you need to also make a, a layout versus schematic uh, for uh, the whatever schematic that you have designed. You also need to extract the RC extraction and I, I also want to add one more point here that is a, if you can do the EM analysis of your circuit if you are working at very high frequency if you can add uh, electromagnetic analysis and uh, help it will help you to understand that how your conductor is behaving as a transmission line and what are the inductive effect that is coming. So, that will also help you to uh, understand the what are the uh, way you can improve the layout. After that you need to do the post layout simulation here also you can at the EM simulation, EM simulation, electromagnetic simulation if your software supports or otherwise you should export the layout to the software which helps to do the EM analysis. And uh, you need to compare the results between the schematic or your post layout results and you need to compare. So, this cycle will uh, go on means you need it is a feedback cycle until unless you do not achieve the results that you want you need to modify the layout you need to change the design because uh, the mo moment you have sent it for fabrication you cannot change anything. So, here you, ju you just uh, connect you, you just need to be have feedback you try to optimize, you do the layout again optimize and then come up with the final uh, circuit which is a layouted with the uh, results that you have targeted. The moment you have a uh, finalized the layout, you need to send the design for fabrication and there are more than 20 to 30 steps of fabrication that foundry will do even lithography and various techniques foundry is using. Uh, for doing the fabrication. Uh, if you want to study the more related to fabrication, you need to do the course on VLSI technologies. Uh, then once uh, you have sent a design for fabrication, it is laid it out, uh, it is a uh, cheap is come out and then you need to do the testing of the chip. 
So, there are various ways you can do the RF uh, chip testing. One of the way is a uh, probe testing, uh, another uh, is a uh, PCB testing and then third is a PCB plus probe testing. So, in probe testing uh, generally we reduce the loss of interconnects or PCB losses, uh, we directly probe. So, there are different kinds of probes are available for example, GSC ground signal ground probes or GSGSC, GSGSC probes. So, uh, which is a ground signal ground signal ground. So, when, when we see the transmission line uh, during the uh, module of passive components, I will uh, go much in, much in detail and I will explain you that how uh, these probes look like and what are the transmission line you can use it for making the uh, RF testing. Another kind of testing is a PCB testing if your frequency is not much higher and uh, you do not have that much effect of the electromagnetic effect. You can also consider the PCB testing which is uh, uh, not much more complex and it will help you to analyze your circuit much faster. The third is a combination of uh, PCB and probe testing. Now, in PCB and probe, we uh, generally try to uh, because in RF circuits or any uh, RFIC, there are may, more DC uh, bias is involved there that you want to tune before and that DC does not require probes. So, what you can do is you can use a various, uh, you can connect the DC with the PCB and uh, RF signal you can, RF signal in or out you can do with the probes. So, it is a combination of PCB and probe testing, you can reduce and analyze, reduce the amount of loss happening in RF and analyze the uh, PCB, analyze the performance of your RF circuits. So, uh, this is a basic uh, flow uh, chart that you can follow for any RF design. So, uh, in uh, as far as this course is concerned, we will also look li little bit on this uh, uh, RF de design specification, how you can come up. We can also have uh, various uh, active components we will try to study, which will help you to decide the technology. Uh, for various components that we are going to use for RF front end, how you can design the schematic and then uh, some of the layout uh, techniques if uh, and what are the transmission line or EM effect because EM analysis is important for this course. So, what are the EM effect that is coming uh, that also we will try to analyze and we also see the various passive components, passive structures, transmission lines can be used for uh, design uh, of layout for millimeter wave or a very high frequency and uh, is some of the uh, this will help. So, the as I told uh, this fabrication we will try to uh, use a we, you can study in a VLSI technology and these are the various testing setup that you can use. So, this is a this is a basic RFIC design flow and I hope uh, uh, in this course you will uh, we will try to cover uh, whatever maximum that is possible. Uh, we, uh, I would like to thank you here and we will uh, go in from the next class, we will try to analyze the basic of communication, what are the basic, uh, uh, let us say, what are the basic uh, techniques for communication concepts, some of the communication like modulation, modulation scheme and uh, digital modulation, analog modulation, what are the parameters that we need to see uh, which will help us for uh, doing this. So, that we will start first from the next class design specification uh, and the communication concept that you can use while designing your uh, RF uh, transceiver design. So, thank you for this lecture, we will uh, see the we will try to uh, go through the basics of wireless communication in the next class. Thank you.